we've all been talking about exposure to antimicrobial agents. Which agents are the worst offenders? Which ones do we really be, need to be careful about? And in taking a history from somebody with diarrhea, which antibiotics would you ask about, for example? Well, first of all, any antibiotic essentially can do this, can be associated with C. diff. And uh, yes, there are high-risk antibiotics and low-risk antibiotics. The highest, as was mentioned, it would be uh, the fluoroquinolones and the uh, cephalosporins. Um, and the lower risk would be uh, the uh, sulfur drugs and penicillin. And uh, more than that, I would need an infectious disease person <laughs> to help guide me through the exact number. But the list of these are uh, quite available. But the antibiotics are given to a person. And the person is as important as the antibiotics. So what people do we have to be especially careful about? And uh, with regards to people, the most important uh, risk factor is age. You know, and every disease has its magic old age. Old age, hold on to your seat, Dell. Old age. Um, I'm not sure how to take that. Uh, old, go. Uh, old age, I'm older than this too. Uh, <laughs> old age for C. diff is 65. Uh, above 65, you don't do as well with the disease as you do below 65. But then there are other diseases. So that patients with inflammatory bowel disease are at particular risk, have particularly severe disease, especially ulcerative colitis. Patients with chronic kidney disease at particular risk, take longer to get rid of the disease. Patients with uh, chronic liver disease, patients who are immunosuppressed, either by drug, uh, such as immunosuppressive agents, biologic agents, prednisone, which also uh, increases the mortality of the disease. Um, you can have patients who have diseases that make them immunosuppressed. Uh, diabetes, uh, HIV, uh, organ transplantation. So those are the, the people and those are the antibiotics that make the risk. But let me just be clear. Are you saying that over 65 you get C. diff more often or over, C. D., over 65 when you get it you do worse? I think that probably both of those are true. I was afraid you were going to say You that. get it more often and as a, as a group you do well. You don't fight the infection as well. Your white cells don't fight the infection as well. They can't kill the bacteria as well. And if, it's if not you good. look at the population incidence rates stratified by age for C. diff infection, and you see the rates in the highest age bracket, so these are adults who are over 75 or 80 years old, compare them to the people who are in the lowest age bracket, people in their 20s, the rates are a hundredfold different. So uh, patients who are older get C. diff more, and they do a lot worse when they've gotten C. diff. You know, it occurs to me, listening to you list these things, that the one common thread is immunoincompetence or immunodepression. Diabetes, liver disease, <laughs> chronic kidney disease, uh, growing older, your immune system doesn't work as well. All of these things seem to correlate to decreased immunocompetence. Well, I, th I think we can almost step back and say, what are the fundamental things you absolutely need to get C. diff? And there's, there's two things. You, you need exposure to the organism. If you're never exposed to the organism, you can't possibly get it. And then you need to have some fundamental problem in the host microbiome. If the gut is normal, if the bacteria in the, uh, the host gut are able to resist the expansion of C. diff, you won't get C. diff. So all these risk factors that Larry's been talking about really are things that fundamentally impact the health of the normal gut microbiome, immunosuppression, old age perhaps, along with all the other problems of old age, a less resilient microbiome. So those key things are what facilitates I, I the I think that's an important point, but I don't think that's been proven. It, it's a very good postulate, and we're talking about the microbiota and the intestinal microbiota for almost every disease that we can mention today. Uh, but careful studies of the microbiota in uh, different situations of disease is only now being started. And although what you're saying I believe to be true, I don't think it's really been proven to be that type. Well, I, I, think, actually, I think there is some direct, uh, more direct evidence. Um, there have been some observations that correlated the ability to mount res immune responses to the toxin and showed that it may be associated with higher risk of developing C. diff in other, other circumstances 
with having a recurrence in more recent data from a clinical trial um, uh, actually showed that people who had lower antibody levels were more associated with um, development of CDF and recurrence. And we know that with age, you are less likely to develop an antibody response. And, and this is a very practical aspect of CDF because as we move forward, we're going to see immune type of solutions or possible solutions for CDF, whether in terms of passive immunity or active immunity such as vaccines. And we're, we're going to talk about that too. But I don't want to let this topic go by, which is the traditional risk factors here, without bringing up two additional classes of drugs. Everybody thinks antibiotics, <clears throat> right? But then we've got the proton pump inhibitors and the histamine two blockers. And if you're on those drugs, you're more susceptible to C. diff. Yeah. How does that work? So there have been a lot of epidemiologic studies linking uh, proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, and other acid suppression medications with C. diff infection. These are observational studies, so this isn't the, the best quality data. We did a study where we gave PPIs to healthy volunteers. We checked their stool before and afterwards, and what we found is that PPIs didn't act like antibiotics. They didn't wipe out the gut microbiome. They changed the gut microbiome just a little bit. They did decrease some non-C. diff clostridial species, so perhaps organisms that are competing with C. diff for the same resources, but Probably it explains why PPIs are a, a modest risk factor for C. diff infection. Uh, I don't think that um, uh, uh, that they're sort of at the level of antibiotics, and the epidemiologic studies bear that out. We think most people get C. diff by ingesting spores, and spores are highly resistant to acid. You don't need to neutralize the acid for a spore to get through your stomach. So, uh, so I'm confused so, again. So I think naive so the, me. the PPIs do have as Dan said, antimicrobial activity. They are okay. helicobacter drugs with MICs, minimum inhibitory concentrations for helicobacter. And it wouldn't be surprising at all that they would also affect part of your microbiota, which you were able to document. Well, you know, or it's, it's possible, but not proven, that they have other more subtle effects. Earlier, Eric mentioned the bile acids as an important determinant of how well C. diff uh, germinates, how well it goes from the spore form to the vegetative form. So it's possible, but definitely not proven, that PPIs may act at that step or so another step. 